Uh, thank you very much uh, <coughs> for the questions. First, uh, Zoleka SAPC, timing of action um, against uh, JG Zuma. Uh, the events around Jacob Zuma have been very fluid and ever changing, rapidly so. Uh, from the announcement of uh, uh, voting for MK to now becoming something else, leading the party, so to say. Uh, so they've been, rap they've been rapid. In between that, we need to remind you about the decisions the ANC have taken. The National Executive Committee, in its last meeting, before we launched our campaign, took a decision which we announced in public that we invoke a rule in our constitution to formally take action against Jacob Zuma. And uh, that led to the action of him being suspended as a member. Him being suspended, that means that the disciplinary processes kick in. And that means that within 30 days, you would have been given a charge sheet, which that has happened. Within six months, he must have been uh, taken to task and uh, explain himself before the DC in terms of the ANC constitutional prescripts. And that is underway. Nothing has changed. And uh, from that point, it meant that Jacob Zuma is no longer a member of the ANC. He's under suspension, as it is. So the DC acts on its own in terms of implementing and undertaking the task of uh, dealing with people who are alleged to have brought the party to disrepute one way or the other. And that, that's what they have undertaken, independent from all of us, which the NDC is the structure of the ANC and independent in terms of executing its mandate. So they have done that. Absolutely correct within their right and their mandate. And that is what has led to the disciplinary case uh, that is supposed to sit on Tuesday. So that's the first question I wish to clarify that timing and action has actually been informed by Jacob Zuma himself in terms of uh, how he behaves and how he moves in terms of uh, his conduct as an individual member of the ANC, uh, so to say. State security allegations. Um, this matter has been clarified by state security minister, has been clarified by SAPC. There are two statements in relation to this matter. One from the SAPC, and that state security have said that SAPC is their client. They don't go around chasing people and vetting everybody at the random. So SABC, as the client of state security, if it decides, the board, the board and the management, that everybody at SABC, at whatever level, must be vetted, that's the decision of the SABC. Now, the ANC uh, does not get involved in the tasks undertaken by various institutions in undertaking the main the mission of exercising their management prerogatives. Their management prerogatives. The ANC cannot uh, be seen to be interfering with that. And the SAPC must clarify itself in relation to the statement they've issued, which I thought the matter belonged to the doorstep of the SAPC. And the state security minister have clarified the issue. So from our part, that matter is closed. Unless if there is an infringement of the rights of individuals in relation to press freedom and all of that, uh, of which the ANC has been very clear that we don't interfere with press freedom and the rights of journalists and journalists being harassed and all of that, we don't subscribe to that. But what happened within institutions in terms of management prerogatives, we can negotiate that. We are far from that. Otherwise, we'll be accused of macro management. 
as a party. So it's not a technical issue, it's a political issue that uh, we can't macromanage institutions. We come from a bitter past of uh, state capture, which meant that institutions have been macromanaged. In this particular instance at the SAPC, there is an independent board led there, I don't know the chairperson, uh, led by the chairperson, and then that board have taken responsibility and issued statements. So I think SABC must ask the question to the SABC itself in relation to this particular matter. Uh, I've clarified the issue of we don't entertain in the ANC gossip and leakages. That a meeting was intercepted and president made the remarks and those remarks are now interpreted to meaning that it's interference with press freedom. It's taking matters too far. What people discuss behind corridors of their own political parties is their own independence. And it must be respected as such. You can therefore not second guess what the president said and want to interpret it to meaning something that it did not mean. Let me explain to you. When we discuss, we look at the landscape and the political coverage in the country. Every political party, even small, they are concerned about how they get covered. So that's why political parties engage with media houses about how they get covered. And the ANC is the largest political party in this country. I'm sure in your newsrooms you've got a difficulty how to cover us. We are not a one-man party. It's difficult to cover the ANC, and I'm sure you get complaints that you are favoring the ANC. But it's the nature of the political landscape in the country. The ANC is the largest political party. You can't help it. It's not a one-man show. Today, as I'm speaking here, leaders of the ANC are everywhere in the country, including former leaders. And other people are now crying foul. Why are former leaders here helping the ANC? If Tony Leon tomorrow decides to campaign like he does for the DA, will I say well, why? If he decides to defend the DA, will I say why? He's a leader of the DA. Our leaders have never crossed to another point except the one that you know, who has taken us on. And he's got a difficulty to explain that decision. He's contradicting himself every day about the decision he has taken to challenge the ANC as a former leader of the ANC. He's alone in that pedestal with members of the ANC, some of them who have left because they believe in him as a person. But ANC leaders at any given point in time will stand up on their own up until Nelson Mandela. Remember when Nelson Mandela went uh, to Eastern Cape and then you journalists said he was afraid and then he said there, Mandela, when he spoke, and then he said, in Kosie to Gumshodos, Nguyos Kokela Yungu, Songke, we are behind Jacob Zuma. He came to Sianoma Rally to endorse the ANC. And then he said the ANC went to fetch Mandela when he was frail at home and all of that and so on. And so that was not the issue. So the question is that, um, uh, ANC leaders have always supported the ANC at any given point in time, and they cannot be judged by anyone uh, about uh, standing for the party and supporting the movement. The trademark case is on course in terms of being taken on appeal, and uh, it will be placed on the court roll soon, as we have been granted permission by the Devon High Court to actually uh, appeal if we want to, and we have decided to appeal and I've announced that point to you. Uh, Kenny, with regard to security concerns, what informed that? I mean, security concerns come from the state side and even our own security. And uh, it's not up to me to reveal that, but to act, because we've got all the information. So we have informed the NDC, you are independent, and therefore we ask this matter be put in abeyance because we don't want uh, something that happened in the past, like when the DA came here, and then uh, there was violence. Uh, it was minimal. And uh, this one can be big. So we have stopped that, because 
the ANC disciplinary processes are internal processes. So the NTC is independent, but it's a structure of the ANC. And if you read the, read the ANC constitution, you will see that. Uh, what is the role of the Secretary General of the ANC? Uh, I've communicated that decision of the officials to the NTC that uh, this matter must be put in abeyance. Of course, there are people who say, um, no, Zuma must be taken on and all of that. We understand that. So nobody says the DC must be put in abeyance, but it, the time of it must happen at a particular time. So the DC will continue, and it is absolutely within the framework of the ANC Constitution. So nothing is in violation of the ANC Constitution. Neither are we interfering with it. So uh, that is the case, and the DC uh, is fully supported uh, by the by the National Executive Committee, as communicated by the Secretary General uh, to the chairperson of the National Disciplinary Committee. So there is no conflict between us and the NDC. I'm doing the job that I'm expected to undertake by the constitution of the ANC, working and interacting between structures, units of the ANC to communicate ANC instructions. Some of these decisions are instructions. They are not, uh, they are not negotiable. Some, but some are negotiable. But my job is also to ins to communicate instructions of the ANC. Um, the, the 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 NDC is very independent. Uh, that that is, is that there's no point about it. I've addressed the issue of the vetting of the SAPC head of news, uh, and uh, I just to emphasize the point that is the call of the SAPC in relation to how it undertake its work, and that is it. I wish to reiterate that we don't uh, uh, question managed prerogatives of institutions. So SABC is independent now. It's run there by the board, and uh, it must be answerable and accountable to itself, but also to parliament and to the people of South Africa. So they have explained their decision. I've read their statement in relation uh, to this matter. Taviso intensive campaign. We, 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 our campaign is not an intensive care unit. It's intensive. As you can see, I mean, uh, ANC is all over. I mean, that, that, is the, that is the ANC capacity in terms of the election campaign. We know and we have explained that the vote to us will not be, it's not a given. You've got to go convince, talk to people why they must vote to, for the ANC. And uh, this is what our volunteers and our leadership have done. To us, this moment is very interactive because asking people to vote for you is equally to get a feedback, is to get a fresh mandate. And uh, we know now, uh, as we go in this campaign, that our manifesto is very consistent, but it's a very practical manifesto in terms of the things that we want to do as a government in the next five years. So we campaign everywhere, not only where we are faced with a threat. Uh, Wazulu Natal is not a threat, it's a densely populated uh, province with the biggest numbers of voters, where voters are found. So we have done this before, we will do this in Gauteng. Uh, they've been defined as the battleground in a way. And so, of course, with the MK party, Others have uh, defined it as a threat to the ANC, but we have said to our members, our posters have been tear in that part of the province and everything else. Uh, we must calm down and be peaceful and be tolerant to everybody. And thus far, campaign has been good in KZN and uh, quite vibrant uh, in a way. Uh, Lunga. Do we worry about MK party? No, we, we don't. <clears throat> if we're going to worry about the party, then uh, it means we, we will not campaign. Uh, was the list uh, changed? Um, we gave an account here about the list of the ANC um, that uh, the chairperson of the list, uh, Comrade Khalima Motlante, gave you a report. Uh, the Secretary General used to run the ANC 
Let me educate you. In the past, Lunga, Mahashule Gwede Mandashi, they used to run ANC list and Kalima Mutland. The conference of the ANC in Mangaum mm. and uh, in Nazareth, subsequent two conferences, changed that and said that we must establish an independent electoral commission. So the electoral, the matter then uh, left the hands of the SG. So at the very SG who did not have the advantage maybe of interfering with people because uh, others did. Uh, of course, working with the collectives in, the, in something that was called the list committee. So we didn't have list committees. We had PLCs in the provinces. And then at national, we had an electoral committee led by Comrade Kalima, supported by election. So whoever is your source, very destructive, and gave you, I, I don't blame you, don't get me wrong, who gave you, it's clear he wants to deal with Malula, doesn't want to deal with the facts, because what he wants to portray, he wants to portray that Mbalula was pressing piano on the ANC list. I don't have such powers. My job was just to press and show that the list is submitted on time. That's what I did. And uh, of course there are glitches. There are about four provinces which we reported that are affected. Those matters are attended to. Largely affected is Limpopo. We are addressing that matter. We are investigating what actually happened. And uh, tomorrow we will meet with the officials of Limpopo in Devon. Uh, with the officials to get the report. The NWC have resolved to establish not a forensic, but an investigation in terms of what happened in terms of those provinces. Let me tell you this because they tell you at night and they distort things. So that's what has happened. It's not a secret. That's the report that came with Kalima Mutlante and all of that. So that committee, which was led by TMB, will then not TMB in Karime, the former Minister of Intelligence, I mean, DG of Intelligence, Tembi Major, will then report to the NEC after the election what must happen to those who have affected. There are very few people who are affected. In Gauteng, it was three. Uh, and then uh, in uh, Northwest, it was three. In KZN, it was three. All our list, national to national, were perfect. Uh, where there was a bigger challenge was Limpopo. But equally, that one we are attending to it. So that's what has actually happened. So there's never been any interference because what the SG does is to press the button and submit the list to the IC. So that's what has happened. Now, uh, the list is firmly in the hands of the list committee. The NTC for Zuma process, uh, I mean, uh, let me clarify you uh, also, Lunga, in terms of Zuma and uh, the, the DC process of Jacob Zuma. Zuma was suspended by the ANC since his suspension, right? He has taken decisive action to become a leader of a party, registered and all of that. The ANC have equally taken and implemented all its decisions. One was the deregistration of MK, we lost. I repeat, we lost and we decided not to challenge it in terms of in, uh, on appeal. Trademark, it's a legacy issue, I explained. We are challenging that. Because we did not want to say we're dragging the Zuma deregistration matter because uh, we're delaying the election process to continue and that we have been petty. We were doing what is within our right as a party. When we lost, we left it there, okay? Zuma now has faced his own issues between himself and the IEC. And uh, that is the matter. That is before the courts. It's got nothing to do with the ANC as an organization. So we need to clarify that. Since then, and the court cases that he, Zuma, has, law, has won, including the trademark issue, he has shown determination to be outside the ANC. Okay? There was no retreat on that point. And then using this Mkonto as and running with it. So he has written his own history. Nobody is writing it for him. He has written his own history on his own outside the African National Congress. So since that time, 
of the National Executive Committee suspending him. He has shown no remorse but determination to be outside the ANC. And that's what he has done. Now, what the ANC is doing is to implement what is within its constitution and its rules. And then uh, Zuma has agreed to subject himself to that because he says he's a member. He has agreed. So uh, that is good. He's subjecting himself to that so we don't want him to suffer prejudice and pronounce him things that he would pronounce uh, otherwise in the future. So he has subjected himself. The issue that has been addressed is the issue of mobilization that is going on here around uh, Lutuli House and that will lead to violence because uh, at the end of the day we must we will be accountable at that particular moment but the processes of the NDC must and will proceed all what we are saying in terms of the instruction was that they must be put in a bed we're 20 days tomorrow to elections on the 29th so that's what is important and we communicated to the NDC uh, un unambiguously. So, 30th challenge, um, uh, it's not correct. Uh, each president served the ANC, their challenges and failures and all of that. And then they also had achievements. But uh, when we have witnessed the biggest uh, setback in our struggle, no doubt, is in the past 20 years. And uh, uh, in the past 20 years, the ANC have admitted in the last election that we have veered off and we are on the process of renewal. So as a matter of principle, that issue is on our manifesto. And uh, that is why people have returned us. And uh, our commitment to renewal itself is what has renewed people's confidence and hope in the African National Congress. Uh, so there is no differentiation um, in terms of leaders, but the fact of the matter is that in the past 20 years, that's when we have seen major setbacks. And uh, the image of the party battered, battered, you know, in a way that uh, uh, you could not, uh, you know, co uh, compare it to anyone in, on issues of corruption, state capture and all of those things. So those things came up and we are addressing those issues. The last point is uh, Zuma's signatory to, to the ANC. What I know is that uh, I'm the Secretary General, so I'm the signatory of the ANC. I was elected in a conference. So if Zuma was elected in 1991, I don't know the constitution of the ANC says he's a signatory for life. I've seen that circulated, so I don't want to respond to speculations. We will wait till people who are raising those issues on social media come to us with uh, their madness. So we'll see it at that time. But uh, I'm not going to respond to faceless social media distraction. Uh, the ANC is known as a party in South Africa. It has been contesting elections, successive elections. It has never been a property of an individual. And then uh, leaders of the ANC get to change from time to time. So uh, that is it. Now, uh, if people uh, believe in their madness, uh, that uh, they've got a case that they want to advance, including deregistering the ANC, we'll deal with it when it comes uh, to us at that moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have dealt with all questions, uh, uh, just mopping up, mopping up, um, yeah, yeah, well, so let me just check, what are, where are the follow-ups, one, two, follow-ups, okay? Sorry, Mr. Maria, I think it's time. Can I stand there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and mop up, yeah. No, we said the NDC must stand in abeyance, including virtual, till after elections. So nothing has taken place on Tuesday? We don't expect anything to take place on Tuesday, as the instruction has been communicated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, 
We, we, we can't address a hypothesis. I mean, the cases are, de are determined on the basis of empirical, I mean, not even empirical, on the basis of evidence provided, fairness, and all of those things. So, hypothesis, what happens if he's not guilty? He's not guilty. If he's guilty, he's guilty, and that is it. So, how do we address it? Because you are leading me uh, to prejudice that Mbalula found Zuma guilty even before he appeared before the ANCTs. Don't do that. Just be a journalist. Don't be sensational. Thank you very much. <laughs>